Hello, my name is Helena Taylor and I am the voice of Bayonetta and I would like to explain to you why I didn't voice Bayonetta 3. Bayonetta franchise made an approximated $450 million. That's not including merchandise. As an actor, I trained for a total of seven and a half years three years at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Art, Lambda, with voice coach Barbara Barkery, and four and a half years with the legendary Larry Moss in Los Angeles. And what did they think this was worth? What did they offer to pay me? The final offer to do the whole game as a buyout, a flat rate, was 4000 US dollars. This is an insult to me. The amount of time that I took to work on my talent and everything that I have given to this game and to the fans. I am asking the fans to boycott this game and instead spend the money that you would have spent on this game donating it to charity. I didn't want the world. I didn't ask for too much. I was just asking for a decent, dignified living wage. What they did was legal, but it was immoral. Now, those of you who follow me on Twitter know that I'm more of a lover than a fighter and sometimes think I'm not very much like Bayonetta at all, but I guess I am a little bit more like Bayonetta than I thought. I understand that boycotting this game is a personal choice and there are those that won't and that's fine. But if you're someone who cares about people, who cares about the world around you, who cares about who gets hurt with these financial decisions, then I urge you to boycott this game. I decided to do it to stand up in solidarity with people all over the world who do not get paid properly for their talents. Fat cats cream off the top and leave us the rotten crumbs. You know, in England right now, there are nurses going to food banks to feed their children. This is not right. This is not acceptable. It impacts mental health. Because of it, I suffered from depression and anxiety. I worried that I was going to be on the streets. That terrified me so much that once I was suicidal. I am not afraid of the non-disclosure agreement. I can't even afford to run a car. What are they going to do? Take my clothes? Good luck to them. Bayonetta always stands up for those with less power and stands up for what is right. And in doing this, you stand with her. Um, for those of you who are interested, I'd like to go into a little more detail about the back and forth. The first thing was I was um, required to audition again, because sometimes um, voices change with time. So I auditioned for the role and obviously passed with flying colours. They then sent me an insulting offer. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to write to Hideki Kamiya. I'm going to write to him and ask him for what I'm worth. So I got a friend who uh, has been in business in Japan to write in Japanese to him. I know he read it because I got a reply. I got a reply saying that he values greatly my contribution to the game and that the fans really want me to voice it over and he the memory of first meeting me as Bayonetta is a memory I hold dear. So I thought, great, thank God. That was when they offered me 4,000 US dollars. Do you know, 
Platinum had the cheek to say that I was busy, that they couldn't make it work with Miss Taylor's schedule. Well, I had nothing but time. They now have a new girl voicing her over. And I love actors. I wish her all the joy in the world. I wish her all the jobs, but she has no right to say she is the voice of Bayonetta. I created that voice. She has no right to sign merchandise as Bayonetta. Any more than I have the right to sign as Eva Green, even though I was her parrot on the video game, The Golden Compass. That portrayal is hers and hers alone. They'll probably try and do a spin-off with Jan. Don't buy that either. So, to Camille, the presidents of Nintendo, and all other fat cats around the world, I would like to quote to you from the greatest moral teacher who ever lived, Jesus Christ, from his parable of Lazarus and the rich man. Lazarus was a poor beggar with sores all over his body and he lived outside the house of a rich man who banqueted and feasted every day and wore purple. Lazarus even hoped for even a scrap off the rich man's table which he never gave Lazarus. Only the dogs pitied him and licked his sores. Lazarus died and the angels took him straight up to heaven, to the bosom of Abraham. Meanwhile, the rich man went to hell and suffered torment and in his torment he cried out to Abraham, Abraham, please save me, take me up to heaven. To which Abraham said, you had your joy in life. Now this is set for eternity. So he said, please tell my brothers who are living like I was. Send them a messenger so they can repent. To which Abraham said, we've sent you Moses and the prophets. Oh, but if you send Lazarus, if a man comes back from the dead, they will listen to him. To which Abraham replied, if you did not listen to Moses and the prophets, it's unlikely that you'll listen to a man who's risen from the dead. I would like to thank you, the fans who have followed me on Twitter, commented kindly and liked my work. Bless you. I wish you all the joy and luck in the world.